Hi. Today's talk is about labyrinths. A labyrinth is a, I guess for all easy purposes of explanation, a maze. And it's not just a maze where you have splits, dead ends, and double backs. It's a maze where you walk through from one start to a center and then out again. I'm actually in the center of this labyrinth at Walcott. So we're going to follow through and just continue on the path that I came in on. And again, the idea of a labyrinth is to kind of solidify your journey and at the same time get rid of the distractions that might interfere with your decision-making on the path or on the journey until you get your goal. So the objective with mindfulness is to the practical objective would be to help the mind and body kind of get through your daily activities and the interruptions that occur throughout any day. It doesn't matter if you're a stay-at-home mom, a CEO, or you hold three jobs at the same time. It doesn't matter if you're a student or a kid, but the uh, daily activities that we go through, at least in the United States, as humans, uh, is always wrought with uh, interference, not necessarily from the activities that you choose and the life you choose, but just existing is going to be a challenge. So when you have to take care of maintenance, breathing, protection, shelter, eating, reproduction, even eliminating, all of those things all come with some form of decision making. And some people would interpret decision-making as stressful. Some people will take the same um, environment and circumstances and say that decision-making is easy. And it, it sometimes we're in awe with those folks who go through that theoretical stressful crisis and they get through without blinking an eye, without even showing an emotional disturbance or um, emotional hiccups. And me, I always wonder, well, how does that person do that? To make it through what I might consider uh, tough decision making. Um, like in traffic. If you're caught in traffic and you're on a highway in a neighborhood you haven't been to before, and you're thinking, well, if I just pull off this road, I might be able to find a shortcut. I'll get on my GPS and see if I can do it. And as you and I both know, GPS is sometimes useful, but sometimes gets you into trouble, especially if it's not updated. So, sometimes it's not the fact that you've been through the neighborhood before, or had the experience before, or gone through a crisis and you're just really good at not repeating the same problem or not going through the same bad decision making twice. Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it's just a sense of relaxation, not letting the stress response get too wound up. And when the stress response is under control, and you don't allow it to cycle into this tornado of, oh, it could be this, or I gotta do this instead to take care of this problem. Sometimes when you get to that point, uh, 
of control, I guess you can call it, it seems like your decision making can be done without any problems at all. And again, it doesn't have to be. It always helps to have gone through the same crisis twice that you can always remember the way you got in and get out the same way without any effort. So I just went through this labyrinth at Alcott, um, also known as a labyrinth of the Theosophical Society, Theosophical Society in Wheaton. I just went and uh, did this and got out without getting worried about, well, this pathway might be wrong or haven't done this, or especially in this case, I can't see where the path is going because of snow. And I had to be before shooting this video I had to think well if I can't see it how am I going to talk about this thing and uh, it it doesn't matter if you actually see the path it, again the objective is to practice some form of mindfulness and it took me about five minutes to, seven minutes to get through that but as I tell all my patients if you can practice a mindful activity five to ten minutes twice a day and at the Chopra Center, it's 30 minutes twice a day, but I'll let you slide on that one. If you can practice mindfulness or some form of mindful activity, five to 10 minutes twice a day, it'll actually bring out the relaxation response just for, not only for that five to 10 minutes, but it'll have a lasting effect where you'll have a sense of calm continue on with you. I like to think of that old commercial back in the 70s where if you eat a bowl of uh, somebody's oatmeal, I forget which company, but if you ate a bowl of oatmeal in the morning, uh, they would show the kids in the commercial going to school, playing in the playground, um, running on the track and having a bowl of oatmeal, an image of a bowl of oatmeal circle and carry through like a halo uh, throughout the whole day into dinner time. And same thing. <clears throat> And that, that goes on in the concept of eating a proper breakfast, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. But the same thing with meditation. If you do it on a regular basis, meditation, mindfulness is supposed to carry through uh, for the rest of, uh, say, 12 hours. And there have been studies with Herb Benson at a Harvard and Richie Davidson at University of uh, Wisconsin at Madison where a half hour to... 30 minutes of mindfulness will be more beneficial than a few hours of sleep or the equivalent hours of sleep. So mindfulness has its has a practice, definitely has benefit. I think it has so much, we found it has so much benefit nowadays because people are just so stressed out. And we don't teach, as uh, anybody that's been to my lectures at Whole Foods, most schools do not teach religion. Most schools do not teach relaxation or developing a relaxation response. And I think the closest thing that we have to the relaxation response is could be considered martial arts and or organized sports where you have to pay attention to the coach. Coach will usually say um, or develop the concept of getting in the zone. And getting the, in the zone is also again a, a way of having the body not react immediately with the stress response. Imagine if you watch the NBA, it's now um, March, just past daylight savings time and March Madness is here and in the basketball, college basketball, if you've ever seen uh, at an away game when somebody takes a foul shot or you'll see the opposing fans behind the backboards just waving a lot of confetti and making movements so that they'd stress out the guy, the visitor team player from sinking in his two points. Uh, but the most relaxed player will not flinch and just shoot as he has been practicing all season and not get distracted by that army of people trying to distract him. That's controlled stress response. That's, 
you can also say that's not necessarily controlling the stress response, that's just bringing out the relaxation response. If you can do that through your average 12 hour day, imagine how good you'd feel, imagine how many pills you can get rid of, imagine how many symptoms you can get rid of. So I'm not saying that it's the crux of all disease, but it certainly makes any disease bad and worse. So if you can control your and and manifest your relaxation response, I say that you can control the relaxation you can control any kind of stress response and you can have a better day, exist at a better level. So the labyrinth that I just did here at the Theosophical Society is one way to kind of get grounded. But meditation's another. Prayer can be considered another. Stillness, yoga, tai chi, they're all the same. They all work to make life a little better. So hopefully this helps. Again, this is the labyrinth at the Theosophical Society in Wheaton. You can follow the link I'll put down below for finding a labyrinth near you. Uh, and I think you'll enjoy it.